So apologies for the fluff. Uh, that host alert was a host alert, but yeah, if uh, yes, uh, blah, 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 let me just check. Scroll in, scroll in, scroll in. Ha ha! Thank you, Neo. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the applause there, Krono. So, <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to have sub alerts. It has sub alerts on. Streamlabs knows I have sub alerts. Apparently, it's gone into. Um, it's apparently gone into seclusion. It doesn't need to know. So yeah, I apologise for that. There's a little bit of cold reading there. But uh, I like his writing. I really do. So the other one is by a chap that is known to some of us. Goes by Spud or Tal, depending on which board you happen to be on. And it's a little bit of creepypasta. Because why the devil not? And again, this is cold, so... Oh, he is incredibly talented. He's a, you know... He is a really, really excellent singer-songwriter. Incredibly funny. Stupidly knowledgeable. Irritatingly good. Okay. This one comes untitled. From a distance, it looks like a magnificent ghostly white stag, easily the size of an elk, with a huge rack of antlers. An attentive viewer may notice that the stomach of the creature isn't as distended as most herbivores, but it doesn't appear to be starving. Still, it's a tempting target. If it's fired at, it will react like an injured deer, staggering and then fleeing into deeper woodland. It's unlikely you'll be paying attention to the fact that the wound didn't bleed. No. Most likely your first hint that something's wrong will be when you realise you've become turned around while pursuing it and are now completely lost in the deep woods. And while you're trying to orientate yourself, you hear screaming coming from the dense undergrowth. You know that voice. A hunter that vanished over a month ago. And it's coming from another direction, exactly the same scream on repeat. There are more sounds now. Bird cries and alarm calls, snarls and roars. And you run, not caring which direction you're going in. You just need to get away from whatever the hell this is. You don't know how long you're running for, but the sounds don't stop following you. Animal carnage interspersed with screaming for help. Eventually it's dark and your legs are burning. You can't see the ground beneath your feet, so the dip takes you by surprise and you crash to the ground. You can only watch in terror as the monster emerges from the trees behind you. Up close, you can see the moonlight reflecting off all too human blue eyes, far too sharp tines and the wide, grinning mouth filled with jagged, mismatched teeth. It advances on you taking its time now you have no escape. You can sense its glee as it leans over you, opens its mouth and lets loose the scream of your dead friend directly into your face. You can only shake in fear as the stream distorts into a warped, choking laughter. And the last thing you see is that mouth stretching open even wider as its teeth come down on your face. Thank you, Dav. I need to check whether that, that one has a title. I like that. That's rather good. I hope I did a reasonable job there. <sighs> Slightly more scented now. Weirdly. Okay, so, having done that, uh, <laughs> may have to not let me read any of your stuff. Fish, your stuff is fine. I like your stuff. 
my biggest problem with the with Redwell is I really don't want to do an American accent and it kind of demands one or possibly northern which I don't want to do either but happy to get the practice in anyway so I am going to flip back over to the AFK I am still here I just need to rearrange fair enough I need to rearrange the stream slightly <laughs> I need to get a lurk command in. That's the word fine again. Fine as in good, fool. Okay. Oh, that's not you. <sighs> I wonder what I just shrunk. Video capture device and retreat. And file away. <laughs> so much smaller now and I feel so much safer. Why did far away merit as capital? Okay, so. I have a lot of games starting with S. Starship Traveller, hello. <gasps> hey Fish, if you want to start by giving me some of your poems to read, then absolutely. Green Resolution, I don't think so. Now I set up the subtitle bar yesterday, so hopefully that should be in the same place. I'm sorry, volume might be high. It decides to lock. Don't you dare crash on me. You ran fine yesterday. Okay. Okay, music on or off? Uh, yeah, Let, let's, let's go with off, shall we, children? <laughs> Because if I can't hear myself think, then you guys are in trouble. Yeah, this, I haven't really poked at the standalone ebooks. I know you can get a lot of books through um, Fighting Fantasy Classics. But they did four, I think it was, as standalones, which are the ones I've got. Let's turn the desktop audio down a smidgen little bit. Oh, well done subtitles, by the way. Okay. <sighs> my my virtual life is in your hands. And I don't even know the book. <laughs> yes, a fighting fantasy game book, an interactive adventure in which you are the hero. Can I take it that we all know what fighting fantasy books are? In the adventure which follows, you are the captain of a starship lost in an unknown universe. Turn to page one. <laughs> You're about to be flung through a back black hole. Oh, that's good. Thanks for that. Into unknown space. Your only chance of return is to find another suitable black hole and guide the ship through it back to your own universe. Okay, so that's our goal. Right. 
Uh, optimum challenge is on classic difficulty mode. Okay. Having served as the dedicated officer of the Astro Navy for many years. I feel I need a big jaw for this. I've been promoted. Enter my name on the registration console. Okay. Oh, I don't think I like that. Okay. Because it's an old book. Registration console requests you finalize your new position with a statistical scan using advanced technology, stamina, luck, and skill. Right. <sighs> Roll my stamina. Oh, that could be worse. Skill. Yes! A skill of 12. A skill of 12. Thank you very much. And my luck. <laughs> Captain Chattercup. Yeah, thanks for that. And now Fishy's in chat. Oh, okay. Process complete. Remove your palm from the console. Head to the Admiral's quarters for a briefing. Admiral Jackson, your superior enters and you salute. He explains your mission, your main goal being to seek out new planets and explore uncharted sectors of the galaxy. As the Astro Navy's newest captain, my god, they must have been hard up. You are to be assigned a starship. Admiral Jackson directs you to choose from the following. Take the starship traveller or choose my own starship. Yeah, drop the ice fish. Maximum skill, thank you very much. So, guys, first choice. Do I take the default chip or do I grow my own? Traveller. Okay. I'll find out when I die. I perform a routine diagnostics check, wondering exactly how they managed not to get sued by Paramount. Weapon strength. Okay. Starting strength of 10. Shields. Okay. A 16. Follow Admiral Jackson to assemble your crew. Get right to the action, take the Admiral's recommendations, or be more strategic and handpick my own crew. Shall we go with what the Admiral recommends? Uh, since I don't know the game, this, well, I don't know this book. Yeah, they're ever so flash, these versions. And I like the artwork. Admiral Jackson assigns you his hand-picked crew, consisting of the most skilled members of the Astro Navy. Your team consists of a science officer, a medical officer, and an engineering officer. Each of these officers are skilled in their fields and often offer helpful advice. In addition, your medical officer is able to restore two stamina points to your crew members after returning from a mission. Protecting the crew is a security officer and their two security guards. They are your first choice for battle as all other crew receive a minus three skill penalty during combat. Everybody's really shy. <laughs> oh no, absolutely. Admiral Jackson wouldn't be sitting there cackling as he wrote this. Finally, Admiral Jackson hands you a tiny bundle of fur. It is a small white cat. The Admiral explains that one of the, <laughs> the most important parts of this mission is to research the effects of interstellar travel on pets and their ability to withstand artificial gravity over long periods of time. Onward. I've got a cat! Get on! <laughs> <laughs> we 
With your brave crew of the Starship Traveller, you give Admiral Jackson a salute. The Admiral gives one final look at the ship's cat and says, Take good of, care of Felicette. Godspeed, Captain Druttercup. Suddenly bursting in and out of breath, a young man appears. He apologises profusely to the Admiral for his delay. Admiral Jackson informs you that this ensign is the son of an important senator and will be accompanying you on the mission. The ensign's name is... Ooh, what do we want to call the ensign, guys? Oof! Okay. Panic! From your seat at the helm of the Starship Traveller, you study the VDU anxiously. Engineering section has reported an overdrive malfunction which has locked the warp engines at a 10% velocity gain. You're watching the velocity indicator advancing rapidly through the safe region towards overload. You hit the communicator button and call engineering for further news. It's not good. The malfunction cannot be traced and it will take another 13 minutes for a system check to provide a full analysis. You're heading towards the Celsian Void and known black hole. You may or may not avoid it. But Science Officer scrubs forth, really, has another plan. If you swing the ship through its immense gravitational pull, its gravity drag may help reduce your speed as you travel away from it. It's worth a try, but the navigational tuning will have to be precise. You swing the starship hard to starboard as you enter the Celsian's gravitational field and fasten your eye on the velocity indicator. To your great relief, the plan seems to be working. The gain comes down from 10% to 5% to 0 to minus 5%. Loud cheers come from the crew, but you're now still watching the velocity indicator. It's now showing minus 15%, then minus 25%, and still falling. The traveller is being sucked into the Celsian void. You hit the red alert button and instruct all ship's personnel to strap themselves down. The ship begins to whine and shake as it rapidly accelerates towards the black hole. There's nothing you can do to avert the impending disaster. An almighty explosion rocks the ship. All the crew, including you, lose consciousness. You and other members of the crew are regaining consciousness. Again, you hit the communicator and call for systems check and damage reports. All systems appear to be intact until engineering reports the warp drive engines are dead. You're floating in space. But your drive reactor should be operational in 20 to 30 minutes. Your navigation officer is bewildered. He cannot identify your whereabouts. And the computer reports you're in uncharted space. Science officer Scrubsforth has run an event analysis and you appear to have gone through the black hole through a dimensional warp and are now in what seems to be a parallel universe. Oh no, fish. All okay. After some delay, you regain warp drive. Long-range scan indicates three solar systems ahead, of which two may have intelligent life. <laughs> what are my orders? Okay, so I can set course for the life-bearing system ahead, the life-bearing system on the port side, or the barren system on the starboard side. Life. Life? No life. Unless I'm flipped, in which case that looked wrong. Trust me, I did it right. <laughs> oh no. Tech support for bus drivers. Okay. I have one vote for go left. Go left. Life bloody dangerous there. I love how the menu is set up as basically a console. That's so cool. An adventure sheet. Medical officers called muscles. Is there a story here? Okay. Port it is. Ah, hello. 
You travel ahead at subwarp speed to allow your sensors to scan for information. They pick up a small object several thousand kilometers ahead and traveling towards you. You continue cautiously. At five kilometers it stops and you do likewise. Sensors report a Class D star cruiser and you prepare yourself with shields up. A message comes in and you transfer it to the screen. A reptilian face appears in a uniform of authority. You assume. As your translator tunes in, the alien's message becomes clear. No, I'm not doing a voice. I am Commander Mictal of the Imperial Ganzig Confederation. You are a non-registered ship trespassing within Imperial territory. Identify yourself and state your purpose. Hi. So I can identify myself. I can run a scan on the Imperial Ganzig Confederation. Or I can open fire. Oh boy. Definitely life in hands. Identify myself? Okay. I can identify myself. I suppose I'm lucky actually. I haven't got Robinson in chat. I think he'd just be tossing fireworks in. You explain to the commander who you are and how you came to be in this territory. He is suspicious. He claims you as a prisoner and says he'll escort you back to his starbase where your story can be considered by his superiors. He instructs you to prepare your transmatter unit to receive his first officer who will accompany you. Do I comply with his wishes or switch off the screen and activate phasers? Techie. Tough choices already. Do I allow myself to be boarded or not? As I said, I've never played Starship Traveller, although I do think I own it. The actual book book. So I can't even do a <coughs> should go left. <laughs> yes, the fighting fantasy books, a staple of the Puffin Club at school. Well they were for me. So I I am in your hands, you guys. Hit me with a decision. Okay. Ooh, that was grudging. <laughs> You leave the bridge and await the arrival of the Ganzagite on the transmatter unit. Within minutes, a body begins to materialise. The brown, scaly body of a reptilian being takes shape in front of you. You move forward to welcome the new arrival, but the creature snarls at you and draws a weapon. Through your translator, the Ganzagite commands you to lead him straight to the computer room. Your ship is following the alien star cruiser through space. You are a little suspicious of this intruder. What do I do? Take him to the computer room, attempt to sidetrack him by taking him to the lower deck, leap on him and try to overpower him. I have very strong feelings about what I should do. I love the fact that you lot were all suspicious before you even got on board. Take him to the computer room, which is where he wants to go. Attempt to sidetrack him by taking him to the lower decks. Or leap on him and try to overpower him. I mean, reptilian, I don't know, natural armour. It's 
sidetrack him. That's not what they said. You engage the gang's guide in the conversation and give him a conducted tour of the traveller stalling for time. You show him the cargo hold, shuttle dock, recreation area and science laboratories. In the animal behaviour lab, the alien shrieks as it sees an eagle chained to a perch. What exactly is this voyage for? You deduce that on the Gangsagite's world, similar creatures are deadly enemies. So, I can ignore the incident and continue the tour via the computer room, release the eagle, or make use of the distraction to capture the alien. Funny people here. <laughs> I love that I do have the page numbers, by the way, up here. I think that's cool. Release the crack. <laughs> I was so close to saying that by accident. Glad it's not just me. Okay. Fly, Flappy. You release the eagle. It flies from its perch and swoops down on the intruder. In abject terror, the alien swipes at the bird as it attacks. You watch as the Gansagite attempts to dodge the Ebochi's eagle. Test your luck. Okay. I hate testing my luck. Yeah, I should have called him Ensign Smithers. Ensign Denby's bound to go. A horrible, horrible red shirted fate. Yeah, by one. I'm lucky. <laughs> I get little eagle chirps. And there's an achievement unlocked to release the eagle. The alien injures the eagle, but wails pitifully and begs you to call off the bird, <laughs> which you do. Apparently eagles are sacred to Gansig culture and injuring them is a mortal sin. You command the guards to take the alien to the brig. Calling up the Gansagite star cruiser captain, you relate the incident, threatening the life of your captive if your ship is not freed. The alien captain agrees to your terms, realising he cannot harm a ship carrying sacred animals. You take your captive to the transmatter unit and send him back to his ship. You're now free to leave. Turn to the bridge. Wacko. Okay, fish. You probe ahead into space with your long-range scanners. On the fringe of your scan radius to port is a small star with an orbiting solar system which you may head for. Otherwise, you may increase speed to warp and head into deep space. It went a lot better than expected. <laughs> I only succeeded at the test my luck by one point, though. I've abused an alien, disrespected his religion and culture. Good start. Very Star Trek. Okay, so I, do I set a course for the small star, or do I hit the ghost studs and warp into the middle of nowhere? Otherwise known as deep space. I haven't disrespected his religion much. Okay, yes I have. In keeping with humans in space of a lot of sci-fi is to be believed. Absolutely. I think J. Michael Straczynski is the only one who's even got religion vaguely appropriate in his alien races. Also be significant that he's an atheist. Head for the star. <laughs> Prime directive written by Avril V. Smog. <laughs> no, because it's in English, not Latin. Okay, headed for the star. As you approach the small star, your scanners pick up two planets in orbit. One's a large red planet, while the other planet is a dull blue. So, I can go for red or I can go for blue. Large red or dull blue. I love the first sub-badges, by the way, guys. 
That looks really cool. Okay. That's blue. Waiting for Chatty to open for a fish, but I will take. Surely you have to go to the red planet first, then you can pick any colour. <laughs> <laughs> you fish. Okay, since sarcasm is your only contribution, we're going blue. You increase speed towards a dull blue planet and start to orbit it. Short range scanners indicate it's a life bearing planet. The most heavily populated area appears to be a city in the centre of a large island. What are your orders? Beam down to the city centre or leave orbit and continue onwards. So apparently subtlety is not in the Starship Captain's Handbook. You can appear in the middle of Trafalgar Square or you can bugger off. Basically. I'm sure they'll be friendly. Everyone's going to be friendly. Video <laughs> Voyager. Yeah. Appear, cause trouble, naff off. So, yeah, without the really unfeasibly tight costumes, though. Yeah, <laughs> and yes, recycle next gen scripts. Indeed. While flying a s inverted soup spoon. Sorry, dessert spoon. So, city centre or leave orbit. Okay. What's the worst thing that can happen? She says, turning to the page where the worst thing can happen. Gold. Okay. Assemble your crew for the dull blue planet with the city in the centre of a, a large island. Science officer scrubs forth. Nurse, medical officer muscles. Engineering officer Lovelace. Security officer Tenfold. Security guards Griff and Shirt. Skirt? Skirt? So. Who am I going to take with me and my away team? Engineering, science, medical, or security, or and security, possibly. Doesn't say how many I can take. Maybe it's me, but I'm kind of keen on not taking the medical officer down with me. If he can heal, he, she, or it. The shirt, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes, I wanted to go shirt. I'm wondering how randomised these names are. It's quite possible. Hi, Mecky. Science, security, and the guard. That makes sense. So, scrubs forth. Yes, make it so. You're pushing it there. Um, science, security, and the guard. Science, security, and the guard. Or s yeah, science, security, and one guard. Okay. Let's take shirt with me. Mr. Reed shirt. Okay. Okay, so I can have three person teams, basically. <laughs> you also call me Deanna now. <laughs> you felt his presence. Okay, I've just beamed into a rage level. You materialise on the planet's surface and look around. You're in a wide street of some kind, which is completely deserted. 
Buildings of sorts line the street, and behind you a large building stands at the end of the road. The buildings are strange structures, their multitude of shapes and sizes, and all look incomplete. <laughs> Continue down the road looking for signs of life. Approach the large building behind you, or try one of the smaller buildings. Am I the only one who feels like we've beamed into the middle of the Berlin Wall's no man's land? This <laughs> very large gentleman with rifles on both sides. Indiana Jones. Well, if she has been considering a new online ID. Not sure that's it, though. Okay, so, large building. Not going to try one of the smaller ones, not going to go down the road. Going to go for the large one. <laughs> yes! That's why it rings bells. I thought you just were driving a buggy around that. That's your contribution to the thing. It's not going to the buildings, it's just, you yeah, know, bring out the SRV. Steps lead up to the large building. An inscription on the door indicates it's a building of some importance. You knock, but there's no reply, although you can hear excited chatter coming from within. You try the door. It opens, and you step into a large entrance hallway. Several pairs of aliens of a variety of shapes and sizes cross the corridor in front of you, travelling purposely from room to room and arguing excitedly with each other. A mysterious creature dressed in shabby blue robes notices you and shuffles over. Its face cannot be seen, but its eyes shine bright at you. It speaks and your translator interprets. Ah, you look interesting. Where do you think the new medicine house should go? You explain you're new to these parts and you would like to meet some person of authority. The alien laughs. No one has authority here, my friend. We're all equal. Come, let me show you around. I let him take me to the main meeting hall or on a general tour. <laughs> I hear knocking, but you can't come in. That is so not what I said. Web captions are not bad, but it's a very big on pop culture. So, main meeting hall or a general tour? Narco syndicalist commune, exactly. They take it in turn to so operate as a sort of officer of the day. Okay. Yes, what he actually means is take you to General Tor, who will then eviscerate you. Oh, it doesn't know eviscerate. No, it really doesn't know eviscerate. Your guide, who's called Fuel, shows you from room to room, explaining the planet. Our gods are freedom and equality, says the little creature. This is an extremely pleasant planet to live on, and it welcomes settlers of all types. Why does your architecture look like early brutalist? Everyone is entirely equal, whether they've lived here all their lives or have just arrived. Everyone may also do anything they like here. We have no need for laws. He shows you around the records office, planning area, and rooms of state. On the way back to the debating chamber, you pass the guard room. You ask why, if there are no laws, they have need for guards. Fuel stops and explains. Guards do not guard things. We do not need to protect things. It's just that some members of our community get pleasure out of attacking others, and of course they're free to do as they wish. But in fairness to the rest of the population, they dress up in uniforms and call themselves guards, so as to warn others that they must be on guard when a guard passes. Do you understand, Captain Dratacup? While you're considering this, however, three of those guards have left their room and have crept up behind you. They leap on your backs and wrestle with you. Fjord all backs away. <laughs> you must fight. Dun, 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 dun,
Okay, Mecky, I'm the captain of a starship. We've been sucked through a black hole. We're attempting to get out through another black hole without dying. <laughs> Apparently, unfortunately, I've got to vessel. I can't just shoot them. At least I've got one. Secu I've got the security chief, and I've got a guard, so that could be worse. Okay. Okay. So shirts. I'll get first guard, second guard, third guard, and I'm attacking the first guard again. I feel I should attack the same one that Scrubsworth is fighting because I think that might be more efficient. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Shirt and first guard square off against each other. Oh, not liking that. Uh. Oh, okay. Jurassic Up surprises first guard with a sudden attack. Really badly. Right, so, um, up slightly double. That's a fluff. Happy with that. Less with that. Although I have still beaten him. My god, does Scrubsworth go to the gym on these weekends? Okay. That's not good. So, first guard's gone down. Cool. Venusian Jiu Jitsu. I'll probably quit combat in future. I just wanted to see how it handled it. No. So, the third guard's getting creamed. <laughs> yes, uh, I have a guard, Mecky. I think it's significant that they're red, blue, and yellow, respectively, for security, science, and command. So going to get sued. Guard 3 is down. Guard 2 can die in the fire, frankly, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Basically, now we all wail on Guard 2. You managed to defeat all the guards and didn't actually lose anyone. Fjol steps back out of the shadows and approaches you. He seems not in the least bit surprised by the scuffle. You ask why the guards attacked. No, for no reason, Rathacup, he says. They're free to do anything they like. Request to enter the debating chamber. Ask to enter the maps and travel room. Leave the building and return to my ship. So. Maps. And you vote for anything other than maps and travel. Okay. 
The Traveller Maps Room is in a state of chaos. I am so not shocked. Books and charts lie all over the floor and the various tables in the room. A small, withered alien with a large head, blue skin and long fingers is asleep in one corner, but wakes as you enter. You ask first for maps of the planet, but can learn little from them. While you wonder whether any of the star charts will be of use, the little man finds a large map and allows you to study it. Apparently you're in a... Apparently you're in a solar system around the sun, Magnus. Saw us coming. Apart from this one, there is only one other life-bearing planet in the system called Trax, orbiting Magnus a little farther out. Trax was recently devastated by war and many of its inhabitants left to settle on this planet. Oh, I'm quite glad we didn't go there. The other two planets, though light years away, are Kulmata, orbiting a purple sun, and Makoman, orbiting a double star. No black holes are to be found on the chart. You thank the creature for his help and leave the building, bidding him goodbye to Fjorl as you leave. You head outside to return to the Traveller. Beam up. <laughs> yeah, I'd say they've got our number. Back on the bridge, you set coordinates for your next journey. Another life-bearing planet orbits the same sun a little further out. Medical officer Muscles tends to the wounded on board the ship. Two stamina are restored to any injured crew members. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We need to add an archivist to the crew. So I can orbit the life-bearing planet, which I know was a war zone, um, wherein people escaped and moved to the blue planet. Or I can set course for the purple sun some light years away. What should I do? You've got a falconer and you've got a cat. Uh, no, everybody should be on screen. Go on. I think it might just be that his are coming through what? in a different colour to yours. What? No, no, Windows are a perfect time to decide to ask me what I want in my startup files. Samsung light years away. <laughs> to be fair, it's actually picking up on me quite nicely. It's just some words it just can't count. I don't think any of the subs are showing. How strange. That's just weird. I shall read you guys back and make sure it goes on that way. But yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I have no idea why subs aren't showing. That's just peculiar. It'd be nice to this stream where you can sod off. I would never, 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 ever. I, v I value in your to a, a degree people do not understand any kind of support. I am also, however, headed straight to Streamlabs to kick it with a stick. So, red war torn planet or purple sun? Yeah, I have no idea why nobody else's comments are appearing. If nothing else, I would have thought it would be the other way round. Only subs. I don't want to learn the basics. I know how the basics work. I'm not even set up to hide chatbots or anything. That's just peculiar.
Okay, I could check out the war torn planet in Didi Poos. Customize bad words. Yeah, all my subs apparently. Right. Might be a humanitarian mission. Definitely not looting. Ah! You approach the large red planet at sublight speed, which is handy, and set an orbiting course. Scanning the surface, you find no trace of intelligent life, but signs of civilization and the fairly advanced one at that are apparent. As you observe the planet through your macro telescope, you see that the surface is covered in a network of roadways and canals, focused every so often at what must be population centre of some sort. You can try various radio frequencies, but there's no response. Beam down or leave orbit and continue onwards. Beam down because we know why it's uninhabited. I'm assuming. Unless you guys want to rethink. Not much point visiting and not beaming down. There's <laughs> only so going to assess the civilization. Tell me, Officer Shirt, why do you have such a large backpack? No reason. Where you get didgeridoo from? <laughs> Assemble your crew for the Red Planet. Pick two crew members. Okay. Uh, am I assuming that Science Officer Tenfold is coming with me? Not Science Officer, Security Officer Tenfold. At least I can take two people. Last time I had a fight. <laughs> Science and security? Same compliment or trip switch a girl for the engineer. I can take two people this time. So, a guard or my security officer? I think Shirt got the crap kicked out of him. So, let's take Griff. Science and security. Okay. Scrubsworth, who did so well in the previous fight, quite scarily. You choose a location within what ought to be one of the planet's main population centres. Oh, good grief. You beam down and when you rematerialise you're in a deserted street. There's a ghostly silence about and something's not quite right. The buildings around you and the vehicles lying derelict by the side of the road appear to be from quite an advanced civilization, But dust is thick on everything as if there's been no activity here for many years. Cautiously, you walk down the street. As you approach a junction at the end of the street, you hear a noise and stop. The others look at you quizzically and listen, but they can hear nothing. You creep forwards towards the corner and jump back sharply as a shape appears. Visitors, says a voice. The creature's roughly man-sized and wears a flowing white cape. We have not had visitors for many years. You explain you're from another planet and the alien nods its hairy head. You ask whether it's possible to meet someone in the position of authority and the creature considers for a moment. Suddenly you hear a small click and a shrill buzzing noise and the alien drops to the ground, scorched by a phaser blast from one of your party. You whirl around in disbelief. Which crew member shot first? <laughs> oh! Mecky, I am so sorry. Hang on. Let me just scroll up. It's not reporting my alerts correctly. Mecky, I will say that. Um, bizarrely. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, who do I think shot first? The guard or the science officer? I find it hard to believe it's the science officer, but you know, it's gotta be Griff. Griff looks proudly at the dead alien and you order your other companion to hold them. Snatching their weapon, you demand to know why they fired at the alien. Why? They gasp. If I hadn't fired, he would have killed you, Captain Druttergup. Didn't you see the weapon in his hand aimed at you? You certainly didn't see a weapon in the alien's hand and neither did your other crew member. What now, Captain? Send the trigger-happy companion back to the ship or beam the alien up to the ship to see whether anything can be done for them. Or let your companion off with a caution and continue. Um, Meki, I will take you at your word that you have subbed and you are more than welcome to uh, make judgment calls. So, send them to bed without any tea. Yeah. <laughs> see, see if the alien's dead, I think, yes. It's me making an assumption there. Flipping your communicator. Oh, come on. You instruct this ship to beam the alien back on board so medical officer Muscles can have a look at him. The alien disappears. You prepare to continue, but a message from the ship comes through. Apparently, the alien didn't arrive. You confirm that it definitely left the planet. There's little you can do about it now, and you leave the problem with your transmatter crew. Continue exploring the planet. There is something really freaky here with this alien. <laughs> Turning the corner, you continue for several metres. A noise behind you startles you, and you stop. With a sudden chill of panic, you realise what the noise is. It's the multiple hammer sound of a pre-laser weapon. Someone or something is firing a machine gun at you. You drop to the ground and scream at your companions to do likewise. As you all lie there with bullets flying over your heads, the other two look at you puzzled. Captain, why are we lying in the road? says one of them, standing up. To your amazement, he stands in the hail of bullets, completely unharmed. Gradually, the sound fades and the others help you to your feet, looking at you in a most peculiar way. A little further down the road, you come across a large building. Do I enter it or do I continue down the road? <laughs> I'm tending towards uh, Chrono's opinion. I think we're talking hallucinatory gas. So yeah, Tippetrek fish, indeed. Hallucinatory world. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, beaming the heck off the planet isn't an option. So one vote for Leggett, which unfortunately isn't there. One vote for... Go in. One vote for continue walking. Right, so. Two for go in. You guys are going to have to give me a... I'm orbiting planet Magnus and there's weird shit happening. I mean, come on. Okay, in we go. You enter the building and look around. It appears to be a library of some sort. Now I really am just turning and going home. You notice the entrance desk and the type of newspaper and take it with you. Perhaps it'll give you some sort of clue as to why this whole city seems to be deserted. Lucky, luckily, the library is computer controlled. You switch on the console and after some whirring sounds, a voice comes back. Good afternoon, reader. What subject will it be today? First of all, you ask for local history, but the most recent entry appears to be some time ago when this city was bustling with life. One of your crew members rushes over. Captain, they say, I've just been looking at the astronomy files. There's a black hole which they think may be a space warp. It's in sector 288. The news is ex indeed exciting. You decide to head back to the ship. Beam up. Well, that was handy. Back on board, you announce your news to the crew. As the navigation officer sets the course, you remember the newspaper and pass it on the, to the language lab for analysis. It's really worrying, isn't it, Chrono? <laughs> 
Using your long-range scanner, you discover a purple star just within range and a small cluster of stars some 2.3 light-years off the starboard. Medical officer Muscles tends to the wounded on board the ship, two stamina restored to any injured crew members. One guy who's poor, still bloody recovering from the first fight. So... Uh, I can set course for the purple star, or the small star cluster 2.3 light years starboard. <laughs> yes, fishy. Yes, in the before time, before Brexit. <laughs> okay, purple star or small star cluster? I suspect, by the way, it's just you, Krona. I just think you bring the weirdness with you. <laughs> Okay, purple star. One vote for purple. I know Fishy's casting, so I'm just going to give him a few seconds extra. That's two for purple. It's looking purple. We're taking the purple. As you travel towards your destination, your language lab reports some interesting findings from the newspaper you gave them. <laughs> exactly, yes. When Chrono GMs bring the weird. You've just come from the planet Trax, a fairly advanced civilization. We know! Some years before the paper was published, a great debate occurred and two groups emerged with two schools of thought. The progressives were modern thinkers that set on material progress, computerization, and the more scientific view of the future. The regressives, on the other hand, disliked the inhuman elements of the progressives' world and preferred, preferred a return to basics. Take back control! Where people did not rely on machines. The Brexit joke is actually way too close! <laughs> A period of Cold War ensued until the regressives discovered the progressives had developed a powerful hallucinatory drug. Ding! <laughs> the progressives had intended to use the drug on the regressives, but when the plot was discovered, they agreed to send all stocks of the drug into space out of the way. Something went wrong, however, and the rocket exploded in the planet's upper atmosphere, subjecting the entire planet to severe hallucinations. On the day the paper was published, its effects were just beginning to be noticed. <laughs> Shaking your head sadly at the tragic end to this pointless war, you return to the bridge and plot your next course. Carrying on for the purple star? I will assume... Approaching the purple star, your scanners indicate that the second planet has an atmosphere ideal for life. You drop into orbit around this planet and scan the surface. There are strong indications of intelligent activity. Indeed, it's likely that the planet's civilization is further advanced than your own. What are your orders? Beam down or leave orbit and continue onwards? Oh, sorry, Knight. So, hyper-intelligent mega-beings are oh, definitely beam down, huh? Okay. day. <laughs> so, I can... Strong intelligent... Strong indications of intelligent activity. I'm thinking science? Um, do we redeem Griff on the grounds that he was clearly hallucinating? Do I take engineering with me? 
I keep wanting to call engineering officer Lovelace Ada. Because I'm so pathologically. Engineering. I can no, I can't I can only take science and engineering with me. Okay. Oh, this may have been a mistake. <laughs> Sorry, Grano. You try an all frequency broadcast several times but receive no messages in reply. You and your crew enter the transmatter unit and beam down to the surface. You materialize in a deserted street. Tall buildings on one side tower over you, while on the other side of the street the buildings are small. Perhaps these are private dwellings. The architecture is alien, but no life of any kind can be seen. In the distance, ahead of you down the road, you can hear a whirring sound. Soon you see a strange vehicle, which seems to be heading towards you. It's a hover car of some kind and moving slowly. As you decide what to do, your translator picks up a sound. Over here, quick! You look around and see a human-sized, somewhat insect-shaped creature, insect creature beckoning you into one of the small buildings. Follow the creature in or ignore the creature and wait for the vehicle to approach. Yeah. No, Griff did not have a friend called Melfish. <laughs> On the other hand, we don't know what uh, Shirt's name is, although I'm sticking with Reed. <laughs> it's Becky assuming we're going to get eaten. Fair enough. What is red in German? Who's <laughs> the Civil War rebellious faction trek episode? Could be. Ouch. Do I stay and wait for the police? Sorry, for the um, strange hover vehicle. Or do I go with the creature that's beckoning me into the building? See, if this was a TV episode, we'd split the party at this stage. What? Thanks very much. Although the poor not wanting to eat you, Mantis. <laughs> okay, I follow the Mantis and hear it muttering. Now I lay me down to sleep. <laughs> you run off down the road and follow him into the building. Just in time, he exclaims. You don't want the PCs to find you in the streets, do you? Did we just shatter the fourth wall? <laughs> You've no idea what he's talking about. You explain you're not from this planet. He's on his guard. You reassure him you mean no harm. You just want information which may help you get home. And he calms down. You're on the planet Kalmata, he informs you. The PCs you've just escaped from are the population controllers. On this planet no one dies, but as the population increases it's necessary to exterminate some of us to make room for others. The PCs have the authority to exterminate anyone they like within certain quota limits without reason. They would certainly have killed you if they had they caught you outside after curfew hours. I'm sorry, the PCs are all murder hobos. Exactly, Fish! <laughs> this is... It is very let this be your last battlefield. I s I Seriously, guys. Anyone else think Steve Jackson perhaps got bitten badly by player characters at some point? I've designed a small village. We're going to kill them. Suddenly the door crashes open and three creatures in armoured uniforms step in. I thought I saw them enter this building, their leader declares. Outside, he orders. Your host protests you're aliens and didn't know about the curfew laws, but the PC leader points a finger and an electric blue ray burns through his chest. You decide it would be prudent to obey the PC's orders. <laughs> Planet Royale. This is the one I didn't bring security. <laughs> You explain you're from another planet and therefore know nothing of their curfew laws. It's illegal to be outside after curfew, says their leader. The penalty is extermination. Enter this vehicle. 
What now, Captain? Obey the aliens and enter the vehicle. Draw your phases and fire. Pretend to comply, then take them by surprise. <laughs> so, we know where Fish stands with this. <laughs> Uh, surprise is an option. I, I I take it that eventually shooting them is quite pop, quite popular. <laughs> Back face of them for double damage. Okay. You walk up to the entrance door as if to climb into the vehicle. As you pass by the aliens, you signal to the others and the three of you spring on them. This proves to be a rather fruitless exercise as the three creatures are immensely strong. They fling you to the ground, but as you fall, you manage to grab the helmet off one of the aliens. It stops dead in its tracks in a very artificial pose as if some switch had suddenly turned it off. The leader grabs the helmet and replaces it on his colleague, who instantly springs back to life. You realise you will be no match for the creatures. Climb into their vehicle as they have ordered. Yeah, I like back phasering. I think back phasering may have to happen a lot when we get on the Tannhauser. Says the person playing the executive officer. Oopsie. Why didn't they tell us they were strong? I don't know. As you enter the vehicle, it rocks from side to side. Your captors climb in and start the hover engine, swinging the car around the way it came. You travel for half an hour or so and finally stop outside a large round building. Other similar cars have stopped there as well and numerous aliens are being led into the building. You're taken inside and put into a room which is evidently a cell of some kind, along with four aliens. They seem resigned to the fact that they're about to be exterminated as part of a population control programme. You cannot understand why they're so unemotional about their impending death. One of the uniformed creatures calls for your party. You'll have to act quickly. Will you try to fight your way out, contact the ship, or arrange to see someone in authority? Beam the heck away! <laughs> I think is an integral part of, part of contact the ship. <laughs> Becky Adore wants to talk to the Potato King. As does night. Ooh. I've got a, I've got an impasse here. Beam the heck away is not directly related, but I'm assuming it's try and contact the ship. Well, we know fighting's no good. I have a horrible feeling that attempting to see somebody in authority might not be much use. Ah, uh, I'm going to try and contact the ship. You try your communicator, but you can hear only static. Something in the building is jamming your signal. However, as you try the controls, you notice something strange. All the aliens you can see are motionless like statues. You have discovered what may be a way to escape. You turn off your communicator. Because you're an idiot! The aliens come back to life. Following the guard, you turn down another corridor, which leads to a large open room. Various armoured guards appear to be direct, seem to be directing civilians through a large open doorway at one end of the room from which a dull red glow is coming. You're directed to the end of the line. Ask your science officer for advice. Use your previous discovery to escape. Obey the aliens and get in line. Well, I know what Drop wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> escape flee okay so we will be escaping the doctor who villains in star trek land use science off with the map would make a run for it nope the heck out of here okay we are noping out <laughs> oh 
god, Tiki has closed. I didn't realise that. Ooh. Remembering what happened last time you tried your communicator, you tried contacting the ship. Again, you're able to get through. You're unable to get through and hear nothing but static. But your communicator again has its strange effect on the aliens. You're looking at a room full of statues. The aliens are transfixed. This is an opportune time to leave the room. Yeah. How very odd, because it was running earlier. I will wake her up again. Windows, uh, uh, Windows has been really peculiar today. <laughs> the permanent marker. <laughs> ah, loot them and run. So we are looting the PCs, are we, if we get the opportunity? Looting, looting, looting. How do PCs travel from Luton Airport? Ooh. Yeah, there was some really weird shit going on today. <laughs> yes, space murder hobos. I thought you meant your permanent LARPA. You head for the circuit centre of the complex. Why? Just go out of the doors. Dodging around the corridors so as to avoid the creatures. You try your communicator several times to reach the ship, but something's jamming the signal. You pass one room in which the walls are covered with electronic equipment. Perhaps this is the transmission room, transmitting the signal, blocking your own signal to the ship. Two aliens st sit inside, but your attempts to contact the ship on your own communicator have turned them into statues. Entering the room, you play with the controls until eventually a signal comes back through your communicator from the ship. You give the order to beam up straight away, noping out. It will take several seconds to fix on your exact coordinates, and while you wait, you remove one of the alien's helmets. Inside the helmet and the creature's head is a massive electronic circuitry. You've been captured by androids. You keep the, the helmet for investigation on the ship, and moments later the transmatter beam locks on to take you up. <laughs> Achievement unlocked, do you like my hat? Okay. The electronics lab reports that the helmet you brought back was indeed an advanced piece of work. With a few adjustments, they'll be able to pre prepare it so that when you wear it, you will increase your skill by a point. This will undoubtedly be useful. Leaving orbit, you sp scan space ahead of you. There's a planet ahead, some 3.6 light years away, which may support life. You enter warp speed and head towards it. Everything stretches and turns blue. You approach a medium-sized blue-green planet and take up orbit position. Scanning the planet's surface reveals several clusters of intelligent life forms. You try to contact them, but nothing comes up on the radio. <laughs> Beam down or leave orbit and continue onwards. Are they trying to eat us? Not yet. I'm, I have to say, I am really enjoying this session. <laughs> we haven't been utterly lucky. <laughs> what on the grounds we'll get it right at some stage. This is very, very classic Trek in feel, for the most part. Beam down, get captured, escape, leg it. First com contact by first principles. <laughs> Doing exactly what we've done several times before would be the last thing they expect. <laughs> well, 
Techie's working now. <laughs> Mo chip. Yes. Okay, assemble your crew for the medium sized blue green planet with several clusters of intelligent life forms. Science, medical, engineering, security. Yeah, no, Techie is. Oh, there she is. Hello, Techie. Nice to see you. You can stay this time. No idea why she didn't. Techie claims to be. I think bless her little cottons. She's there, but she doesn't quite know what she's doing. Okay, so science, uh, or guard, not a guard, right? Okay, um, let's take shirt with me. It's Riff randomly shot at people last time. And I can take somebody else. So, science, engineering, or medical? Medical? Okay. I'll take muscles with me. Oh, I can take someone else. I can take an extra person. Naha! Uh -huh. Hello, Techie. Nice of you to join us. Okay. Science it is. Oh, my God. Okay, now you're just taking the mickey. You land on the planet and look around. A thunderstorm's raging around you and it's pouring with rain. You're standing on the rocky ground about a hundred metres from what appears to be a village of some kind. Three aliens, presumably villagers, are shuffling around about halfway to the village, but as you appear, they're startled and turn to face you. They're strange, podgy creatures with long necks and stumpy legs. I'm sorry, where'd you get a picture of me? One of the aliens turns and waddles off back to the village at what must be a running pace. The other two are advancing towards you with weapons. Long pointy sticks. Drawn. Wait for the aliens to arrive. Walk towards them to meet them halfway. Make a dash for the village. Phasering them into ashes is not an option. Come in peace, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, shoot to kill. Come in peace, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, men. God, flashback to school. And now, unfortunately, that's it. I've got Star Trekking stuck in my head and we'll have for the next two days. Thanks.
<laughs> well, I, th I think we were kind of doomed, but yeah. <laughs> so, do I wait for them? Walk towards them? Or run for the village? <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Fish. And I have to say that after a stinker of a day, this is exactly what I needed. So, we've got one vote for run to the village and try and sell them shit. We've got one for mm, waiting for them. Apparently. <laughs> so far, we've been stealing off everybody we met, met. Okay, so we are waiting. Through your translator, you talk to them, explaining your mission. They're suspicious and hold you at bay with their weapons, but agree to take you to the village elder to talk. As you enter the village area, other aliens shuffle towards you inquisitively. If Yoda turns up, I'm leaving. You're marched to a large hut in the centre of the clearing to meet with the village elder. You enter this hut and see a large, somewhat wrinkled alien squatting in a far corner. After you've exchanged introductions, you begin to question him. Ask him about the planet and its inhabitants, or their knowledge of astronomy. Thank God for Universal Translators. <laughs> Inhabitants, we want to know if we get eaten if we fall asleep. <laughs> Mecky, that is really practical of you. <laughs> okay. Inhabitants and the planet it is. The alien is quite a talkative creature and tells you you're on the planet Kleba. On the surface, not Cuba as I initially read that as. On the surface of the planet there are many villages of similar creatures. Their stage of cultural development seems to approximate that of the Middle Ages on Earth. They're an agricultural race. The weather on the planet used to be excellent, but bad weather has ruined their crops for several seasons. The weather is controlled by someone they refer to as the Rain Lord, who lives in a fortified castle two hours' journey from their village. The Rain Lord is, they believe, punishing them with this bad weather. As the crops have been failing, the village has been hit by famine and disease. If you have your medical officer with you, you may offer them to see what can be done for the sick. You can ask whether they have any knowledge of astronomy, or you can offer to contact the Rain Lord. I do have my medic with me. <laughs> yes, Mekki's checking the village for strange uh, vine like plant growths. Okay, medic first. Medical officer Muscles is taken round some of the huts to see what, whether anything can be done. I need to get equal to or lower than Muscles' medical skill of nine. Conditions are very primitive. Medical Officer Muscles notices that many of the aliens have a fever and tries a drug which appears to bring their fever down. The aliens are grateful for your help. Continue to explore the village. Medical Officer Muscles returns and complains of feeling unwell. Test your luck. My luck is currently nine. Translation, you drug the aliens. Oh. The feeling soon passes and medical officer muscles recovers after a brief rest. <laughs> Uh, 
You may now either return to the ship or continue to continue your voyage or offer to contact their rain lord to see if you can help them with their weather problem. Mm. And so far I have made my luck check by one each time. Talk to the rain lord. Do I do I think a subtle at phaser point is implied here? Pizza point? Phaser. Not pizza, phaser. Okay, talk to the British, but you've decided they're British, okay? <laughs> Following their directions, you head towards the hills to visit, visit the Rain Lord's castle. After some 15 minutes walk, you will see a large building in the distance, and it takes you another 15 minutes to reach it. Evidently, a walk which takes you half an hour would take the aliens much longer at their sluggish pace. You reach the gate and can see an armed guard bearing the, barring the way. Draw your faces and shoot at the guard, or continue up to the gate and talk to them. Ouch. And indeed, ouch. The rain clouds loved him and wished to water him. Talk first, shoot later. I notice you're retaining shoot as an option. Okay. The guard sees you and flurries into action. Raising its head in the air, it lets out a shrill whistle. Seconds later, you look up to see you're surrounded by alien guards, all with weapons pointed at you. Surrender to the guards. <laughs> you're escorted into the castle towards a central keep, apparently the nerve centre of the castle. You explain that you wish to meet the Rain Lord. One of your guards goes off to the keep and comes back some moments later. Another group of guards comes over to take you inside the keep. You enter the keep. As you enter, your eyes widen. You're not in the great hall or perhaps stateroom you'd been expecting, but in a large computer complex. The walls are lined with sophisticated control panels covered in gauges, dials and indicator lights. In the centre of the room, behind a large screen flanked with a number of keyboards, sits a human figure. As you approach, this figure turns around on his chair. No but rain, no pain. Have mercy on the rain lord's guards. That's an achievement. I think he's a streamer, actually. He sees the size of that monitor. He's got one of those big curved Samsung jobs. Yeah, I mean, I was assuming it was, but... Ah, oh, our intruders, chuckles the small man sitting at the controls. Perhaps you might be able to help with our little problem. But firstly, I thank you for your peaceful approach. Please accept this small token of my gratitude. He gives you a small triangular crystal device. This transdimensional compass may be of use. Not enough to, say, guide a starship, but useful for a single person. It might prove useful. The man calls himself Bransel. You introduce yourselves and to tell him your story. I may be able to help, Cadmin Druttercup, says Bransel, if you're able to help me first. He goes on to explain that many years ago he was an interstellar trader carrying a cargo of sophisticated planet control computers to glean a three in another sector of the galaxy. His warp drive failed and he was forced into orbit around this planet. He was able to contact Gleena three to explain the delay, but they would take no excuses and cancel the order. <laughs> you know what happens if you don't turn up in half an hour. I think he was beamed in from an episode of Doctor Who. Thus, he was left with his cargo and no buyer. Facing financial ruin if he returned home, he decided to settle on the planet. That's extreme! Through his advanced knowledge, he was quickly hailed as a sort of god by the inhabitants who built him a castle in which he could set up his planet control equipment. Since then, he has indeed acted as a god, and by his own account, a benevolent one at that. However, some time ago, he discovered a malfunction in the weather planning system, which meant that he no longer had control over the weather. 
As the climate was normally very damp, the years of fine weather he had provided for the benefit of the inhabitants' crops had resulted in huge reserves of rain being stored in the planet's clouds. As soon as control was lost, a torrential downpour started. It is! It's the Wizard of Oz! If you have knowledge of planet control systems and can help me get back control of the weather, I'm sure the computer's knowledge of astronomy will help you to get back to your own universe, promises the little man. If science officer Scrubsforth accompanied you to the planet, call them in. If Scrubsforth is dead, you can't help. Okay, so we're fixing, getting Scrubsforth to fix it. We bought science engineering, sorry, uh, science medical and security. And we've used both of science and medical. Scrutinising the planet's control systems, science officer Scrubsforth studies the complex programming of the strange machinery. Hopefully they'll be able to restore the planet's weather back to normal. Yikes. Ooh, ace is it. Science officer Scrubsforth takes a dump of... Pardon? <laughs> Science Officer Scrubsforth takes a dump of the weather control program back to the ship to try to analyse it on the ship's computer. It's been written in a strange language, <laughs> but the computer is able to give some insight into its logic patterns. Scrubsforth alters it slightly and run runs the modified program. Within a few moments, the rain dies down. Bransel is delighted and offers to use his computer to search for a suitable black hole to transport you back to your own universe. The computer locates several such black holes. Unfortunately, it cannot distinguish between them, but is able to tell you that will be able to, you will have to travel towards it at warp speed 3 to effect the transfer successfully. You thank Bransel for his help. You leave orbit and probe with your scanners for likely destinations. Some 3.3 light years away is a large red planet you can head towards. Medical officer muscles... Uh, okay. Didn't lose any stamina anyway. You switch to warp drive and head towards the red planet. As you reduce from warp speed, you approach a small grey planet. What are your orders? Enter orbit around the planet or continue onwards to your original destination. Big red, little grey. Don't leave scientists alone, they get strange. <laughs> Mm. Apparently it was science because it was the it was a software issue. If it had been a hardware issue You reckon you're pushing our luck. First person to say that's no moon. Okay. Tiny grey planet, here we come. The planet appears to have no life on it, but scanners detect some kind of activity. Perhaps the regular workings of a machine. God, I was kidding. You decide to investigate and send out a party in a recon plane to see what's happening. We have recon planes? Why did you not mention this sooner? They pilot the plane to the area of the signal and land on the planet. It's rocky and barren, but not far from where they land, they find a scout, a scout ship. Scout ship? Scout ship of a type they've never come across before crashed into the surface. Do I tell them to investigate it further or return to the ship? I've sent out an away team in a, in a shuttle. Galileo 7, here we come. It isn't small blue and planetoid D. <laughs> uh huh. Kick open the door and uh, loot the treasure. Hope this isn't skin of evil. <laughs> oh, egregious piece of writing. Okay. Compliance. They can find no signs of the pilot. Perhaps he had died or was killed in the crash. An automatic signal, probably a type of mayday call, is being transmitted by the ship's radio. 
There being nothing else to see on the planet, your crew return to the recon plane and fly back to the ship. Landing the recon plane, the party make their way to the briefing room to report to you. As they relate your findings, you're interrupted suddenly with an urgent message. Captain, we've lost three of our engineering personnel who were involved with docking the recon plane. They're all dead. What will be your first command? Put the landing party into quarantine in the medical section, seal off the docking bay, or jettison the recon plane. Yeah, it could well be Xenon. We never did work out why they've got um, cockpits. So, quarantine the landing party, seal off the docking bay, or jettison the plane. Okay, one vote for quarantine, one vote for the docking bay, quarantine. I like how you're all blaming the landing party. Becky, any preferences? Okay. That's the weirdest misspelling of actually I've seen. Ever. Okay, so now we've got two for the docking bay, one for quarantine. I just read that as the duckling bay. <laughs> okay. Quickly, the crew seal off the affected area so as to spread the, as prevent the spread of this unknown killer. No more deaths are reported. Consult with your medical team. Using an EVA uh, suit, I think we all know what that stands for. Medical Officer Muscles examines the body of one of the victims. He's wandering around in a hazmat suit. I feel so safe. They find that the man has been poisoned. The planet below must have some sort of poisonous gas in its atmosphere, and this has now been carried back to the ship. I can either order the Medical Officer to search for an antidote, or evacuate the air from all the affected sections. Yes, the fish who says neat. Eve. Oh, mate, really? And you're getting into Bioshock if you're talking about an Adam suit. Ouch. So, do I ask for, try and find an antidote or vent the deck? Venting the deck? One vote. Getting a bit more lively now. <laughs> or deadly, as the case may be. Okay, giving a fish on delay answering time. Elephant velocity actuator. <laughs> okay, we have a majority verdict. You give the instruction to evacuate all air from the affected areas and all crew within the in area are instructed to wear EVA suits. I'm really glad about that. I had visions of it being an absolute bastard and you know, you've just killed your crew. But this isn't paranoia. The air is pumped out into space and half an hour later fresh air is introduced. Science officer Scrubsforth checks this new air and it's found to be poison free. Continue your journey. Good choice, guys. Back on the bridge, you set your course. Ahead, there are two planets. Set course for the large red, or set course for the blue, or set course for a small, fast-moving spot with signs of life. <laughs> Trust the ship's computer. The ship's computer is your friend. <laughs> Report for termination, citizen. A ship? Possibly a ship? Could be a sentient asteroid, for all you know. Could be the TARDIS. At least you said intercept, not shoot down. Okay. Is it just me, or do they look like kind of... I don't know, Klingon birds of prey. No, Romulan warbirds. If they were designed for Tron. 
paranoia in space. Oh, yes. Okay, I will intercept and that somebody has strong feelings. Oh, no! You head out into space with scanners probing ahead of you. A small, fast-moving dot comes within range. As you approach, you identify it as another ship. You send out an all-frequency radio message and soon an alien face appears on your screen. The face is brown, scaly and reptilian. It's Mick Mull of the Imperial Ganzig Confederation. Captain, have we encountered the Imperial Ganzig Confederation before? Yes, yes we have! Do you relate your exchange with Commander McTell? The alien's suspicious and orders that you accompany him to the nearest star base. Do I accompany him to the star base? Open fire or make use of my knowledge of Ganzig culture? Summon the ship's falconer! Yes! Yeah, it's the original warbird. And so's the spaceship. You inform McMal that you will be doing no such thing. The Ganzig commander is furious and is about to engage in battle. You change visuals to the lab where the eagle that 